Hi everyone. We are from Faculty of Applied Science would like to present Animals and Plants Defense Mechanism. Animals and plants have defense mechanism to help them avoid predation. First animal defense mechanism is coloration. Aposomatic color used to warn the predator that they are distasteful and offensive. The bright colors serve as a warning to predator of its noxious taste. These brightly colored golden poison frog are highly toxic. But they don't use their poison to hunt. They secrete toxin from their skin to keep away other animals that might want to eat them. Other defense mechanism is mimicry. Mimicry is a defense mechanism where one species resemble another in color, shape, behavior or sound. Two type of mimicry is Mullerian mimicry and Batesian mimicry. Mullerian mimicry is when two unpalatable species that inhabit the same community, mimic each other. Next, Batesian mimicry occur when palatable or harmless species mimic an unpalatable or harmful one. Example are Microris tenere snake and hawk moth larva puff. For special case Texas coral snake imitate the similar looking but much less deadly false coral snake. This allow for predators to attack false coral snake and not die. Thus learning to avoid those types of snakes in the future. Next is cryptive and descriptive. Which individuals resemble their background? Prey hide on their background so the predator would go unnoticed because of success blend in. Leaf-tailed geckos almost completely indistinguishable from a decaying leaf on the forest floor. When standing still this tiny creature are practically invisible. Next is intimidation displays where the animal inflate themselves with air and raise their hind parts to appear as large as possible they will display brightly colored markings and eye spot to intimidate predators. Some animals have their own special ability to defend themselves. Here are some types of them. The first one is Malaysian explosive ants. High in the treetops of Borneo, there is an ant with a deadly secret. It can explode. On the outside, it's just an inconspicuous, brownish red ant. Fittingly, Lacini and her co-authors named the new ant Colobopsis explodens. Next is octopus or squid. Squid let out a black ink which darkens and clouds the water making it difficult for predators to see them. Once these marine animals release their dark cloud of ink they use their arms and siphon to propel themselves away from the danger. The third is flying fish. While they cannot fly in the same way as a bird does, flying fish can make powerful, self-propelled leaps out of water where their long wing-like fins enable gliding for considerable distances above the water's surface. This uncommon ability is a natural defense mechanism to evade predators. that plants also have their own defense mechanism in order to protect themselves? Here are some of the unique defenses. The first defense mechanism of plants is Crypsis. The sensitive plant, Mimosa pudica will fold up its leaves when they are touched, making them appear dead and therefore unappetizing. This defense prevents herbivores from biting the plant. This happens because of specialized mechanoreceptor cells that detects touch. The second one is idioblasts. Not all plants bear their defenses on the surface. Dumb canes or, Diefenbachias again, has specialized cell called idioblasts. It contains defensive compounds like razor sharp crystals and pain inducing chemicals. This is what idioblasts subjecting raphides looks like. Raphides, which are barbed calcium oxalate crystals or fire into the mouths of predators and then release an enzyme analogous to reptilian venom. 
This can cause paralysis, and thus loss of speech, hence the common name dumb cane. Last but not least, have you ever seen these little, hair-like crystals features on your plants? These are called trichomes. They are most found in cannabis plants and tree nettles plants. Most herbivores are discouraged from grazing on this plant because of irritating toxins secreted by the trichomes. Trichomes are microscopic crystals that coat the leaves and buds of cannabis plant, and serve as its resin glands. Trichomes will protect the plants from fungal growth and also high winds. Because of their bitter taste and powerful aroma as trichomes contain terpenes, it ward off most insects or animals from going near the plants. Moreover, stinging nettles are also covered with trichomes. When something brushes against these hairs, their very fragile silica tips break off, and the remainder of the hair can then act like a needle. It pierces the skin, and releases various chemicals from the base of the hair, which causes the sting. The chemicals contained in stinging nettles venom aren't identified yet but, scientists think that they could be histamine, acetylcholine, and serotonin. These are the ones that induces pain and causes inflammation. What is the commensalism? Commensalism is the only one species benefits while the other is neither helped nor harmed. For example, more fish are very bony and have a dorsal fin, the fin on the back of fish, that acts like a suction cup. Next, let's look at to the next symbiotic relationship which is parasitism. What is the parasitism? Parasitism is the one organism, the parasite, gains, while the other, the host, suffers. For example, the deer tick is a parasite. It attaches to a warm-blooded animal and feeds on its blood. Ticks need blood at every stage of their life cycle. Lastly, is mutualism. Mutualism is the symbiotic relationship which both partner get benefits. For example, of mutualism is an Egyptian plover and crocodile. The crocodile just lies with its mouth opens. Then, the plover will clean off its teeth. With that, it explains the uniqueness and diversity of ways of how animals and plants protect themselves. It also shows that symbiont relationship is important for organisms to ensure their life. Thank you for watching.